All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bloomerang Academy. We're so glad that you are joining us today. Um, if you would, as you're coming in, um, please go into the chat and tell us where you're joining us from and what the weather is like there today. Um, here in Indianapolis, it's about 38 degrees and partly sunny, it says, but there's not a lot of sun out there today. <laughs> All right, if you need the dial-in number at any point, should you lose audio or if you need it for um, any kind of translation purposes, it's 1-669-900-6833. And I will drop that into the chat in just a moment for you as well. A couple of other housekeeping items before we get started today. If you'd like to have a live transcript and be able to see subtitles um, that are in real time, please click on that button that you see the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen. Also, we have two different ways for you to interact with us today during the session, and we encourage you to interact with us. Uh, the first is to utilize the chat like you're doing right now. Um, and telling us about the weather, where you're at today. Um, the second way that you can, oh, I also want to say that the chat is a great place for you to drop in any kind of best practices or thoughts or ideas you have around what's being shared today. Um, we always learn a lot from our participants, so please feel free to share um, those types of thoughts in there. But if you have a question, if you, there's something that you really need an answer to to help you utilize your database better, we'd love for you to drop that into the Q&A for us because that way we will see it. It won't get lost in the chat. So that's kind of the difference between those two. Um, the resources that are going to be mentioned today are going to be very valuable and they will be shared with you after the session today. So please don't be trying to write things down. You will receive it in an email later today. You will also receive the slides and the recording so that you can come back and revisit those. Um, so don't worry if you're not catching everything. There'll be a lot of information today. It's going to be great, um, but you'll also be able to revisit that. Any questions that we're not able to get to right today in the um, session, we do have Diana Otero in the background helping us answer some questions. Um, if you are not able to get your question answered, please don't worry, we will follow up with you um, via an email follow up. And also, if you need any further assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out to our amazing support team at support at bloomring.com. They are so helpful and always willing to um, help um, anyone that might have a question. So let's start today with a poll. So we want to find out what role do you have in your organization? And we've given you some choices here. So please go ahead and chime in. What role do you fill in your organization? And you'll notice the last one says other all hats. We, still, we often find that that is, is one we need because I know a lot of you fill many roles. All right, gonna give you just a few more seconds. Oh, I really appreciate how many people are participating. Thank you so much. Wonderful. All right, four, three, two, one. Okay, I'm ending the poll. <laughs> All right, let's share those results. Oh, and as you can see, look how many of you, 33% have many jobs in your organization, not surprising. We have um, ab about the same number, 29% fundraisers, 27% admin, and 11% of your executive directors. So that's good to know. This information will be valuable in all of the roles that you fulfill. So um, we do want you to, to take it in, enjoy um, what is being shared today, because we know that it'll be valuable to you. And we have an amazing instructor with us today as well. I'm very excited to introduce Megan Collins. She's a data migration associate here at Bloomerang. Um, she's been with Bloomerang since early 2020, and she sp has spent two years in the customer support department. Um, she is now working in implementations as a data migration specialist. Before she joined Bloomerang, she gained customer service administrative and event, event, event management skills in the hospitality industry through various roles at world-class hotels and theme parks. So she has a wide range of background, um, and I think you're really going to enjoy um, your time with her today. So Megan, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you. 
Thank you, Margie. Um, I am going to go ahead and share my screen here if I can. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Oh, my cat wants to say hi. <laughs> There we go. All right. Um, so can everyone see my screen okay? Give some thumbs up. Perfect. Okay. Um, so today we're going to be going over some gift entry and reporting foundations. Um, so these are our goals for today. And I just want you to remember that since this is a beginner level overview, um, it's intended to give you a solid foundation. Um, we're not going to be going too deep into the nitty gritty of each function highlighted. Um, it's just um, it's it's just kind of intended to show you what all is possible um, at the basic beginner level, and then you can delve into other topics as you see fit. Um, so our goals for today are to understand Bloomerang terminology and setup so you can enter gifts the way you need to. Uh, we're going to be able to enter basic types of GIFs into Bloomerang and run basic reports on GIFs. So our agenda is first we're going to go over transaction terminology. We're going to dive into the database and do some GIFT entry demo. We're then going to do some basic transaction reporting and then we're going to end with some further resources. So first we're going to go into transaction terminology. Um, so in Bloomerang, there are six transaction types, and um, these transaction types are donation, pledge, pledge payment, recurring donation schedule, recurring donation payment, and soft credit. Um, most of these can be created straight from any constituent's um, account by clicking that blue square. You can do new donation, new pledge, new recurring donation. Now, soft credits, they are considered a transaction type, but they're a little bit special. Um, they require um, a parent donation, um, as it were. They can't stand alone. We'll go into that a little bit further um, a little bit later. And when entering transactions, um, it's important to be able to, to be able to differentiate between raised versus revenue. Um, so your raised amount is the amount that you can, um, the, the amount that you can count on having once all your pe your pledges are paid. So that's useful for if you're running a specific campaign to show how much money has come in from that. Um, and revenue is the, your cash in hand, the money that you've actually received, what's in your bank account. Um, so uh, a donation is both raised and revenue. Um, a pledge is raised amount. Um, pledge payment is revenue, as is recurring donation payment. Um, and that's raised as well. If it doesn't quite make sense at this point, that's totally fine. You'll see when we start making reports how, um, how important these, um, these designations are. But it's good to have this in, your, in the back of your mind um, for when we start going through adding the donations. Um, so the payment methods that we have available in Bloomerang are cash, check, credit card, EFT, and in-kind. Um, these are the only ones available. Unfortunately, it's not possible to add additional ones. However, um, some organizations do choose to create a custom field to track additional payment methods. And we will take a look at custom fields a little bit once we go into the database. Um, this is a required field. And you do have to choose one of these when you're entering a donation. Um, typically, if you don't know which one to pick, if you think, well, whatever I'm entering doesn't really fit any of these, um, typically the default would be to cash. So let's go a little bit deeper into pledges and recurring donations. So a pledge um, is. Um, it's basically a promise of a total amount. So someone says, I'm going to give $1,000 over 
this number of months. And that's where the specific time frame comes in. So they have their, uh, their installments broken up into however many it takes to fulfill that total amount. And once the payments equal the pledge amount, it's considered fulfilled. Um, payment methods may vary. One month they might pay by credit card. One month they might pay by check. Um, they, they might have a reminder coming from you or they might just remember that this is something they do every so often. Um, so you'll, you might be entering things in different ways into your database. Um, a recurring donation is very similar to a pledge. Um, however, um, it is open-ended. It continues until the donor requests to stop. Um, there's no um, total amount set. People just say, I'm giving $10 every month. And that goes until they say they want to stop. It doesn't necessarily stop when they reach $1,000 or anything like that. Um, it's typically auto-processed, which means that they either they or you are going to put a payment method into Bloomerang that will process um, the payment automatically um, for them. So it'll come out of their bank account or they're off their credit card um, at the set frequency that they've chosen, the same amount every time. Now, coming from support, um, we do get this question a lot. Um, when you're looking at a constituent's timeline, especially if they have their first pledge payment or their first recurring payment on the same day that they've set up their pledge or recurring schedule, it might look like there are duplicate entries. Don't worry, it's supposed to look like that. These are not duplicate entries. You'll see on the bottom, because the bottom is um, the bottom is furthest back in time. As the timeline moves up, we get closer to present. Uh, so the first thing they've done is they have made their commitment on the bottom here. So the original pledge or recurring schedule shows that a commitment was made and it holds important info like the schedule, frequency, and auto payment information. And then once they make their first payment, it'll show up above the pledge. And this, the payments show when the funds were actually received, when you actually got that money um, either, pro like either processed or in some cases straight into your bank account if it's already been processed um, so that you can see that they have, they have begun fulfilling the commitment that they have made. In some cases, it might not be the same day that they made the original pledge or recurring schedule. Like they may make their pledge on the first of the year and not pay until, you know, maybe a few days later or even a few months later. Um, but it is common to see both the pledge and the pledge payment or the recurring schedule and the recurring payment um, to have the same date if they, if you create it and they pay at the same time. So later in the life cycle, this is what um, a pledge or a recurring payment is going to look like on the timeline. At the bottom, once again, we've got our pledge and our recurring schedule. And as we move up, we have our recurring payments. Both of these schedules are monthly. So you can see each month these payments are coming in. They're going towards this specific pledge. And then this one is going towards this $25 recurring schedule over here. And we're gonna talk about soft credits a little bit as well. Remember that's the, the little bit of a special transaction type that has to have a parent transaction. So a soft credit is a way to give a constituent monetary credit for another constituent's donation. Um, a soft credit is not actual received funds and is not tax deductible. Um, so when you, um, examples of when to use soft credits are for solicitations. For example, maybe you have board members that are responsible for reaching out to a certain number of people. And if those people then do decide to donate as um, in response to that board member solicitation, you can soft credit that transaction back to the board member saying this transaction, this donation wouldn't have come in without this person. So we're soft crediting, crediting them, even though they didn't write the check, they still deserve some credit for it. Um, it can also be used for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. You can soft credit a, a team leader. 
Um, it's very commonly used for donor advised funds or family funds. Again, this person didn't write the check. Their donor advised fund or their family fund wrote the check, but they're still, they still deserve to have credit for this donation. Um, United Way donations are commonly soft credited um, because Do United Way will send a like a lump sum and then you can soft credit the, the smaller individ individual breakout amounts to the specific uh, donors. And employer match donations are also commonly soft credited uh, because again, the employer wrote the check, but the employee is the one that initiated and say, I want these funds to go to this organization so they still deserve credit. So gift entry, let's go ahead and try it out. So I am going to go ahead and open up my database here. And is everyone able to see my dashboard here? Yes, we can see it. Wonderful, okay. So this is my demo database. Uh, we are going to set up some example transactions, some example donations on some constituents. Um, full disclosure, I am a big fan of the video game Fire Emblem Three Houses. So we are going to be using some of my favorite characters from that game as test constituents today. So if you are into video games, you may recognize some of these names. Let's see here. Go into constituents and we will search for my Blue Lions house leader. Let's find Dimitri. So I found the person that I want to start um, entering gifts on. But before I do that, I want to make sure I have everything set up so that I can put everything in the way I need to put it in. So even though I found the person I need, let's make sure I've got everything I need set up. So we're gonna go ahead and go to settings. And we are going to go ahead and click on transactions here. And we're gonna make sure that I have a transaction processor set up so that I can process donations directly in Bloomerang. I do, I'm using Stripe Connect. Um, we recommend using Bloomerang Payments. But my demo database was actually created before Bloomerang Payments existed. So I'm gonna be using Stripe Connect today. Another thing I wanna check, I wanna make sure that my funds, campaigns and appeals are set up correctly. So we'll go into my transaction settings. I have all the funds that I want. I'm primarily going to be doing things with the building fund today. Looks like I've got my campaign set up. And I've got my appeals set up. So everything looks good there. And then in addition to those, I wanna make sure that I have any custom fields that my organization uses set up already. Um, so we'll click on transactions here and look at our transaction custom fields. Um, now this page is going to look different depending on your organization's needs. Um, so for my, for my organization, um, I have, how would you like to be recognized? Would you like to remain anonymous? Um, so, and we also have some event sections since events, uh, event tickets are considered transactions. Um, I have some fields for auctions, and then I have some fields for tributes outside of the regular tribute function, but we're not really going to go into that today. So now that I have made sure that I've set up everything I need, I'm going to go back to the constituent that I need to enter a donation on. There he is. I will go ahead and click that blue square and we are going to add a new donation. So let's say I have received a $10 cash donation from him. Fund is going to be building fund and fund is required. Um, campaign and appeal are optional, but I see most often usually fund and appeal 
being used because the fund is telling you where the funds are being used in your organization. Your appeal is telling you where the donation came from, basically. Um, so this came from a holiday appeal. So I'm going to choose the holiday appeal. And this is cash. Um, I know that this, uh, this particular constituent likes to be anonymous. He's a prince or a king, depending on where you are in the game. So maybe he wants to be a little bit humble and be anonymous. So we are going to make sure he's anonymous, set my custom fields down here, just like we saw in the settings. And once I have everything the way I need it, we'll go ahead and click save. And we can see there's his new donation for January 5th today on his timeline there. So that is a regular donation. Um, next, we're going to, going to do a pledge and let's go ahead and pull up Sylvain for this one. So I'm gonna click, <clears throat> I'm gonna click that blue square again. We're gonna do a new pledge. Um, it's being made today. And uh, just for the sake of this example, let's do a $1,200 pledge. And we're gonna do, he's gonna do $100 installments every month this year. So the fund again, I'm gonna do building fund and the appeal came in as the holiday appeal. Let's see, make sure I've got everything set up here. Um, he doesn't need to be anonymous. So I'm just gonna leave that blank. I've got everything set up the way I want it here. So now I can hop over to my schedule. Um, I know that the first installment date is going to be today, so we can either type in the date or we can go ahead and select it. The frequency is going to be monthly. And the installment amount is going to be $100 per month. So then once we click generate installments, you can see here that um, Bloomring has calculated that this is when the installments are going to come in. This is when each payment should be due. Um, so say, for example, you've got a custom pledge schedule, um, maybe like Sylvain's birthdays in June, and he's feeling particularly generous on his birthday and wants to do $200 that month instead of $100. Um, what we can do is we can click this edit button and we can edit manually. We see that we can change this to $200 and get rid of the last payment because that's going to drop a payment off. So now we have 11 installments <clears throat> totaling $1,200. So even though this one is different, it's still part of our expected schedule. This is what Bloomerang is expecting to get. So we'll go ahead and open auto payment method. It was a little upset that I didn't click none hard enough the first time, I guess. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and save. So there's the pledge there. Um, so, but just like as we saw on the slideshow, this is the commitment. This doesn't show that any money has been received. Um, so say we've received his first $100 donation. We are going to click on the pledge. We can click the actions button and we'll do a new payment. So this is a $100 donation. The building fund and this, let's say this came in via check. Now you don't have to put in the check number and the check date. Um, but you can if that's something that your organization does track. I can go ahead and save. And now we can see that it looked just like the presentation that we had earlier. We've got the pledge on the bottom and that first pledge payment, the cash in hand, the money that we've received on the timeline just above it. So that is um, kind of the basics on entering pledges. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and go into recurring donations. So we're going to go to my personal favorite character. We're gonna go over to Felix here. Uh, we are going to click the blue square and we will do a new recurring donation. And we'll say that Felix is doing $15 to the building fund. And if I look over here at the schedule, it's ours today and the frequency, the default frequency is monthly. That's fine. I, he's gonna be giving $15 monthly. Um, so for this one, since it's a recurring donation, you don't have to set up an auto payment method for a recurring donation. Um, but it makes things a lot easier if you do, because it'll just take that money out automatically from the constituents account. Um, and also if you have a, um, an online form set up, they can set this up on their own and put their, uh, their payment information in. So there's very little you need to do on your end, but say for example, that um, Felix did not fill out the form, you're putting this in manually, maybe he's on the phone with you. Um, and you're setting this up for him manually in your database. So we are going to set up his credit card. My processor is selected. Now I'm going to do a test card. So since this is just an example, no actual funds are being moved around. Just as this is just a test card. And he wants to be anonymous as well. He doesn't want people to know that he specifically is giving to my organization. So we'll say that he's gonna be anonymous. We will go ahead and click save. And since I've put in the payment information, we'll see that we've got his schedule and his first payment here, since I said that his schedule is starting today and here's his auto payment information. So we've got the schedule here that shows the commitment was made. There's the auto payment information. There's the schedule. We can just see that it's monthly on the 5th. The last payment status was successful. And then here is the payment above that. The credit card was processed. And if I want to, I can click here to go to the recurring donation schedule to review that commitment that was made. But this one here, the payment is the cash in hand, the money that I've actually received from Felix. Now for soft credits, let's say for example, that, um, that um, Felix has given to my organization before, as you can see here, um, and he has um, and he has solicited Dimitri to give uh, to my organization. So we can go back to Dimitri's account. Going to go to the timeline and this ten dollar donation that we just put in. If when we want to soft credit Felix, because we're saying this transaction wouldn't have been possible without Felix. Um, he deserves credit as well, even though he didn't write the check, the money didn't come from his pocket. So we can click the soft credit button over here. We will search for him. And select him. I'm gonna soft credit the full amount. You can break up the soft credit amount if you're soft crediting multiple people. You can also soft credit multiple people for the full amount. Um, but for this, for the sake of this example, just simplify, we're gonna do the full amount. And now we can see that it has been added to this transaction. So here is the original information over here. Over here on the right is the soft credit. And the fun thing is if we go back to Felix and go to the timeline, let's see. Oh, I think I need to update. Either that or I didn't save. Let me go back to Dimitri real quick. Just make sure I saved. Oh, 
I did not. So let this be a lesson to you. Always save your work. <laughs> Through this real quick. Add, save. Perfect. Now we'll go ahead and go back to Felix. And we can see there's a little blue line there in addition to this green line, which is the revenue. Um, so he's got a soft credit now. And there is the soft credit. So it appears on his timeline, even though he didn't give the money, um, we can still see that he's being credited for this donation. So there it is, and I can even click on the original donation. And that takes me back to Dimitri's organization because he's the one that actually gave the money. Uh, so now we're going to look at some other ways to enter gifts. Um, we're going to do just very briefly touch on rapid gift entry, imports, and Google Sheet batch entry. Um, so say, for example, maybe you had an event. Um, and everyone at this event, there was a giving challenge and everyone gave $15, um, all to the same fund. And you don't wanna go through Bloomerang and entering $15 building fund every time. So what you're going to do is, you can do a new donation and we'll set those defaults. So $15 to the building fund. And let's say this was these were checks. So all the donations I'm entering for the next hour or so, maybe, say they're all going to have this in common. I can go ahead and click Actions and then Store as Default Values. And this is just on the user level. If there's anyone else in your organization entering gifts at the same time, it's not going to affect them. It's just for your user. Um, so then if I save this, see Dimitri's got a new $15 donation here. I can hop on over to Ingrid here and create a new, she was at the event as well, we'll create a new donation. And it's showing me that defaults were applied. So I've already got the $15 to the building fund and check selected. Maybe I have a note here. Um, Maybe I set a custom field to remain anonymous, but the basics uh, were the same. Save. Perfect. I can move on and let's go ahead and hop on over to Mercedes. She was at the event as well. She gave the same thing. Check here. Everything looks great. We'll save. So if you have a lot of transactions that have the same um, basic information coming through, rapid gift entry is gonna be a great way to get those done quickly. Um, another um, way to get multiple, um, multiple donations into your database quickly is gonna be via the import function. So let's hop on over to my example import. I have already got the blue lions in my database. So I decided to use the golden deer for this import. Um, they gave via a holiday appeal. Maybe I um, just checked the mail and their checks came in. So uh, I had an intern entered all of this into a spreadsheet for me. Um, and I wanna put this straight into my database. So what we're going to do is We are going to download it as a CSV. We are going to hop back over to my database, go to data tools, and we are going to import. And just as a reminder, this is a very broad overview. If you're kind of struggling to keep up, like, oh my gosh, like, I don't, what was an import? What's going on here? Um, this is just showing you what all is possible. Um, and we do have detailed classes and, um, and resources that go much deeper into these functions. Um, so we are gonna go ahead and do a new import. We are gonna name this 
Holden Deer. I am importing donations. And these are all individuals. I'll select my file. And then this is the most important step of an import. I'm making sure that all of the columns in my file are matching up to the correct fields in Bloomerang. Going through here, it looks like first name is going to first name, last name, last name, middle name to middle name. Home email is matching up to the email address column in my file. So that's what I want, that's good. And date, amount, and fund, my required fields are also matching up. I can go ahead and next, eight new constituents will be added, eight donations will be added. That sounds good to me. We're gonna click run. And right here, um, this is a big um, important point of imports. Once you run an import, um, you will not be able to undo it. Um, you will have to um, delete any transactions that are created by accident manually. You'll have to merge any constituents that are created by accident manually. Um, so especially if it's your very first time doing an import, we recommend reaching out to our support team to review your file and make sure that everything is going into your database as expected. Um, it's not a requirement, but it's very, very highly recommended. We have customers that have been with us for years and years and years who still send every import file to support. Just start a real quick support chat. Hey, can you make sure this is going to go in? Great. Support rep takes five minutes, tests it out. Yep, you're good to go. Everything's going to go in the way you think it's going to go in. So we are going to go ahead and click run. My import is complete. So now I can go into my database and those new constituents that donated are in my database and their donations are there as well. Um, one limitation with imports is that you do um, need to do just regular donations only. It's not possible to create pledge payments or recurring donation payments via import. And you do have to have matching criteria. Um, like I showed in my file, you can't just have first name and last name. There's probably a lot of people out there named John Smith. You have to have the email address as well, um, or the email address, the address, or the phone number so that Bloomerang knows that it's putting it on the right person. So those are, um, so imports are really handy, but those are some limitations to that. Um, the third way that, um, let me pull this down here. There we go. Um, the third way that you can enter gifts um, is through Google Sheets Batch Entry. And now this is actually a paid integration. Um, some organizations have it, some do not. Um, if your organization doesn't have this, we'll have a poll at the end to see if, you know, if you're interested in learning more about it. Um, but remember how I talked about it's not possible to create recurring donation payments or pledge payments via an import. We can do it via the Google Sheets batch entry um, integration. So we'll see if it uh, cooperates with me. Sometimes it doesn't like to be left alone for long periods of time. Um, so remember that recurring donation that we put on Felix. We'll see if we can... find him here. We'll wait a little bit, see if it will start searching. There it is, that little magnifying glass means it's searching. You know what, let's see. There he is. Sometimes it takes a little bit. Um, but remember how in the import we had to do the, the name and the email address or the name and the phone number. This one, we can just search for it. Um, Google Sheets says, hey, is this the right person? Yep, that's the right person. 
And now we've got the correct constituent and we know that it's the correct constituent and there's not gonna be any duplicates. Um, and I can even select a recurring donation installment to put on. Um, so we'll do today, do $15 and say this one came in via check. We will upload payments. Sometimes this takes a minute as well. And now these green arrows show that they have been updated. So now if I go back to Felix, there it is. Um, quick and easy. I just put it straight into Google Sheets. And then once I had everything that I wanted in Google Sheets, I uploaded it and there we were. Um, let's see here. We can also enter split payments. Um, so say, let's go back to Dimitri here. Say he sent in a donation and he wants um, half of it to go to the building fund. Um, and half of it to go to just general operating. Um, you can see my defaults are still applied here. We are going to remove my default values. We'll do $30. And we are going to split the payment. So here we go. So the total amount that he sent in was $30. He wants to split it two ways. So we are going to do $15 to the building fund and $15 to general operating. So now we see that that split is good, $30. 15 and 15. Oh, I didn't do my method, which is required. And now we can see the split payment here. So he sent in a $30, $30 bulk cash check, whatever. And this is where those donations are going. Uh, all right, so we're gonna head back to our presentation, but first I wanted to pause uh, for any questions. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, we have several questions. Um, let me start with this one from Amy. Um, Amy's asking, is there a way to give credit to both people when a, a um, couple makes a donation? So when she enters a donation, as for the husband, she wants to and give the wife credit. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm reading this wrong. When I enter a donation, as for the husband and give the wife a soft credit, it counts twice for the household. That's right. Yeah, we don't recommend doing soft credits within households um, because for that very reason. It, so it shows up twice um, when you look at the household timeline because the household is a combination of people within that household. Um, when you are acknowledging them, you can actually acknowledge as a household. So when you're in your letter templates, you can filter by household instead of by individual. So even though the donation is on just maybe the husband's account, your acknowledgement will say, dear Mr. and Mrs. Doe. So it'll be acknowledging both of them, even though the donation is just on, on the one individual's account. Cool. Um, so uh, a question from Heather, will the person get an auto reminder to pay monthly commitment when they do recurring donations or does she need to set up a letter for them yeah so um typically um so the industry um the industry best practice right now um we have some really great webinars on um recurring on recurring donations um they actually don't recommend that you send out um, a reminder or an acknowledgement every single time a recurring donation payment is going to come in if it's automatic um because the the, the constituent is expecting it mm -hmm. um 
but um, if they're not coming in automatically, um, you do need to set up um, an automatic letter or automatic email to go out to people who have an upcoming payment due because um, that reminder isn't done automatically. Okay, awesome. Um, how and Beth, Betty wants to know how do you enter stock donations? You yes, advice for that. Yeah, so let's see. Um, let's go ahead and go back to um, let's go ahead and go back to Felix here. So we'll click on the recurring payment. And remember, the payment is the money that we received. The schedule is where the commitment is held. We will go to the schedule, and in the little schedule box on the right here, there is an end date. Um, so say the person says, I, um, I'm all finished. Um, I don't want to give, uh, I, I don't want to continue my recurring donation. We can put today's date in. And save. And now, even though the payment information is still stored here, the end date has been set. So Bloomerang is not going to charge this constituent anymore on this schedule. Cool. Um, we'll do, let's see, can we do one more question? Yeah. Um, it's from Melanie. She says, um, if she has existing recurring donors that were migrated from another system, mm -hmm. can she input their monthly gifts as recurring and just populate the required credit card spot with dummy information? She wants Bloomerang to recognize her existing monthly donors as recurring, and she's just not sure the best way to do that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so if the recurring donations aren't being processed by Bloomerang, you do have to put the donations in manually. Um, and the reason for that is um, Bloomerang doesn't know if you've received those donations or not, if they're coming in from an outside system. Um, so um, it's not able to create those donations every month unless, they, unless Bloomerang is charging those cards itself. Um, because otherwise, you could be automatically populating donations that might not have happened. Um, that is a good opportunity for um, maybe using Google Sheets batch entry. Um, or um, I know that our payments team is um, starting to migrate over some um, recurring donation um, credit card tokens from other um, from other vendors. Um, so if you're interested in learning about that, maybe moving over your recurring donations from your old processor to Bloomerang payments, um, our customer success team may be able to see if that's possible for you, um, and we can get you over to them um, at the end of this uh, presentation. Great. And I do want to circle back. I don't think I spoke plainly. And um, Betty wanted to know about stock donations. Oh, stop. Oh, I thought yes. you said stop, not no. stock. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, that um, was me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so stock donations, um, we actually have um, an FAQ um, for how to enter stock donations. Um, basically, we recommend that we put it, um, that you put it in as cash. And um, actually, you know what, let me, we can go to help in videos here. And this is, this is my view <laughs> um, <laughs> because, because I used to be in support, um, but so how to handle gifts of stock. Um, so entering stock is to enter as cash with the amount that it was sold for if sold on the same day. There's also, um, there's also some nuances that uh, show you um, how to do stock based on um, indus like industry standards, things like that. I won't go too deep into it, but we do have a recommendation for that. Excellent, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the help articles are really great for those kinds of things too. Right. Awesome. Now, um, do you have more to cover or? Yeah, just a little bit more. Let's keep going. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. 
Um, so now that you've entered your transactions into your database, <clears throat> now it's time to build some basic transaction reports. Um, so what kind of report do you want to use? Um, you might think, well, that's an obvious question. I'm entering transactions. I want to use a transaction report. Not necessarily. Um, you might sometimes want to use a constituent report instead. So to see what kind of report you want, you're going to, um, my recommendation is to say it out loud. So saying, I want to see all the donations to my building fund, or I want to see a list of people who gave this year. So the subject of this sentence is donations. So you probably want to use a transaction report for this one. I want to see a list of people who gave this year. Subject is people, so you probably want to use a constituent report. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it's a good way to help you determine what kind of report to start with. So let's go ahead and try it out. We'll hop back over to our database. And we'll do that first one that we talked about, all the transactions to our building fund. Um, we'll click new for new report. Um, you do have the option to build a report from scratch or start from a template. I almost always like to build from scratch because that way you can tell Bloomerang exactly what you want to see and you're not working your way backwards through preset filters. Um, templates are great for if you're specifically pulling a Liebunt or specifically pulling pledge reminders, for example. Um, but most of the time, I like to build from scratch. Um, and this is going to be a transaction report. So this report is showing all the transactions in my database. Um, and I'm going to use my filters to show exactly which transactions I want to see. So I said I wanted to see the building fund. Oops. So the fund is building fund. We'll click OK. So these are all transactions to the building fund. Now, you may remember earlier we talked about raise versus revenue. If I go through here and look at my transaction types, um, I see, yep, donations, recurring donation payments. Oh, but there's a schedule. And there's another schedule here as well. So this amount that the sum of the, the sum that it's showing right here might not be entirely accurate for the amount of money that I have actually received. Um, so one of the most important filters in a transaction report is the type filter. So we'll type and then we'll do our revenue transactions, which are donations, pledge payment and recurring donation payment. There we go. So now that sum is a little bit lower, but this is an accurate re representation of how much money I've actually received, how much actually went into my bank account from the building fund, because it's only donations, recurring donation payments, and pledge payments. So one of the first things you do when you open up a new transaction report, most likely is you're going to want to set that type filter so that you're getting an accurate representation of exactly what you want to see. Um, now, you might want to pull a report for just pledges and see how much people have given and how much they have due. We can do a type filter just for pledges. And we can then add columns. to show the amount paid and let's see here, the balance, that's what we want. We're gonna add two columns. So now I can see, here's the pledge that we made today. Here's Sylvain with his pledge. Um, so it was a $1,200 pledge. Um, he is paid $100 and there's $1,100 to go. Um, so that can be helpful in tracking pledges. And again, this is just really scratching the surface of reports. Many other things you can do with reports. You can go very in depth, but this is just kind of showing you what's possible. And then last but not least, I talked about sometimes you need to do constituent reports. Say you want to send a letter to everyone who donated this year. If I were to pull a transaction report, um, 
it would show multiple entries per person if they donated multiple times. That wouldn't be a good way for me to pull a mailing list because I'd end up with multiple labels for the same person. So for this report, say, if it's a constituent report, I'm going to add a filter for has transactions, very common filter to use in a constituent report. We are gonna do specific transactions and that pulls up the transaction filters. This is what we call a nested filter. And we are going to do date. We are going to do last year. We'll hit OK. Keep hitting OK until you don't see OK anymore. And now that's a little bit better. So we know Dimitri gave multiple times last year, but since it's a constituent report and we're filtering just by constituent, he's only in here once. So if I were to create a mailing label, if he had an address, which he does, which he doesn't, but um, it would be much more, it would be much more conducive to that use case for making um, a list of all your donors who gave last year, regardless of if they gave multiple times. And we can even add a column to show how much they gave last year. Um, so we are going to show the sum, the amount of transactions. Now we do have to set the filter here as well. This is a, another, another question we commonly get in support. If I set the filter up here, why do I again have to set the filter down here? It's because since, since this is a constituent report, it's pulled the list of people that meet this criteria up here in the main filters. If I didn't change this at all down here in the column filters, it would show me the sum of the amount of all transactions belonging to that constituent, regardless of these filters up here. So we want Bloomerang to, to display just uh, last year's transactions. So we're gonna do specific transactions. Date is whoop, last year. Okay, and then okay. And it shows how much they gave last year. And that is, um, that is pretty much it for my scratching the surface of reports. Um, we are going to hop into goal review, but before we do that, um, let's pause for some more quick questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Megan. So we do have a question mm -hmm. um, from both Sheila and Angie. They're wondering, how do you handle um, gift donations that are in honor of? Yeah, so that would be done via a tribute. Um, let's see here. Yeah, since this is just kind of scratching the surface, um, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but Yes, I want to leave the page. Let's go ahead and go to Dimitri's account again. And just like the soft credit box over here, there's a tribute box. I can either create a new tribute or I can do an existing tribute. I think I only have Harry Potter tributes in here. Uh, James and Lily. Yep, James and Lily Potter. There we go. So I can attach a tribute to this transaction. Um, and you can set up tributes right there from the, um, from the transaction itself, or you can go to settings, click on transactions and go to tributes there. Um, and we have, um, we have full, um, we have full walkthroughs on how to use tributes and how to set them up as well. Awesome. So um, I do have a question here from Teresa. How do you distinguish between tribute and soft credit? We get a lot of donations in honor of someone who has helped to cultivate the donor. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So if it's a cultivation, um, usually in that case, you'll want to do a soft credit um, because that person has specifically reached out to the donor and said, hey, you know, I want you to um, donate to this organization. 
Um, and then that soft credit then is going to show up on the person's timeline who cultivated that donor. Um, with a tribute, you do have notificants, people to notify when a transaction comes through, but it's not going to show up on their personal timeline. Um, so if you're wanting to track donations that came in via cultivation and you want to see how many transactions have come in via this one person who's cultivating multiple people, soft credit is going to probably be your best option for that. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're getting close to time, mm -hmm. so I do want to let everyone know if you did not get your question answered today, we do have record of that. So we are going to circle back to you um, and try to get you the best answer we can. Again, always feel free to reach out to our amazing support team. They are just remarkable people who really want to help so they can walk you through just about anything. Um, Megan, thank you so much for being here with us today. I know that this information was really valuable um, and we appreciate the time and energy that you took to, to join us today. Yeah, it is my pleasure. Yeah, just real quick, here's our goal review, what we learned today. And there are some additional resources here um, and you'll get this, as Marjorie said, you'll get this slideshow emailed to you. Um, and if you have any questions, I did spend two years on our support team. Um, please don't be shy. Go ahead and email them, chat with them. If your organization has phone support, um, go ahead and give them a call. And if uh, and they're always happy to help if you get stuck. Thank you again. And I am going to quickly just launch a poll. If you're interested in finding out more information about batch entry, um, please just go ahead and enter uh, your response here. This is another way that we'll be able to follow up with you if you're interested in hearing more about that. So um, otherwise, everyone, thank you so much. Go out. Please have a wonderful 2023 and keep doing the amazing work you're doing. Thank you for that. We really appreciate it. And yes, Amy, this video will be shared. You will get this late, the video later today and the slides. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.